What's up ladies and gents? This is Casey Kidd coming at you with another Destiny video. Today it's Monday, the day before the reset. I figure this is always the best day to go ahead and talk about the Banshee Gunsmith bounties because you've already probably finished up everything that you want to do for the week and before everything resets tomorrow and you have new Nightfalls, new Raid Challenges, new Trials of Osiris, new Challenge of Elders, everything that's going to go on next week, you might as well go visit Banshee and do his bounties. So if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and smack that like button and subscribe to the channel. As usual, we're just going to show you what I ended up grabbing on all three of my characters. And remember, if you rank up Banshee, you will get weapons. You'll get legendary weapons that will drop up to 330 light. So it's not 335 light, but it's going to give you weapons that you cannot get anywhere else in the game. Whenever we did the video on the God Roll primary weapons that I have, pretty much all of them came from Banshee. So that should tell you that doing these bounties and leveling him up gives you a chance at getting some incredible weapons. You can couple that on top of the packages that you already buy from Banshee each week and you're going to find yourself pretty much your best source of getting some end-game quality weapons that you're going to take into PvP, or PvE, or whatever suits your fancy. Again, Banshee is kind of that hidden gem that people just don't do, and the bounties are typically really easy. They're really typically easy to do. This week there were 4 out of the 5 that were PvE focused, and I did them early on in the week. I just didn't pick up the packages until today. But don't bother picking up the Crucible ones unless you really, really want to. Unless you're just that 250 experience points away from ranking up. You can go ahead and typically skip the Crucible ones. If you do all five and your rank is at basically zero experience, you're never going to be able to rank Banshee up in a week anyway. So if you happen to skip one, don't worry about it. You'll just get it next week, next arms day that comes around. For me, this week, let's see, we ended up pretty much going to Mars. Mars ended up taking care of a large number of things. I started off on the Cosmodrome. There was a primary weapon that I had to use to kill fallen enemies. That was taken care of really quickly. Then of course the rocket launcher where you need to take care of major enemies. I used those hive that were right below the pretty much spawn point from the Cosmodrome. So that took care of two of the weapons. The remaining weapons I ended up finishing up on Mars. There was the hand cannon that you needed to get double kills with. That was pretty easy to do right where you spawn in on Mars, right down below where the Vex and the Cabal end up coming out. And of course you needed to kill some Cabal Centurions. Those guys ended up getting taken down in the Scablands for me. Up towards the top there were a couple spawn points where they could come in. I would just run around back and forth to take care of that. That in the rocket launcher was pretty much the most difficult, at least the most time consuming portions of the bounties this week. It really wasn't that difficult, but budget yourself around an hour or so, and you should be able to take care of one or two of the characters in that time. Two hours you should easily be able to get through all of your characters. Again, that might sound a little bit long, and it might be a little bit long. You could probably get it done much quicker than two hours, to be honest with you. But whenever you do, you'll have all four of those bounties done, you'll be good to go, you'll be able to rock it with Banshee, and he's going to give you some loot, and you're going to be like, alright Banshee, give me something good. <laughs> because if he doesn't, you're going to be ticked off, and rightfully so. But more often than not, you're going to get a weapon that at least looks semi-interesting. It might not be exactly the role that you're looking for, or exactly the role that you're striving for, but it might give you some weapons that give you a little bit of pause, and make you think, you know what, I'd like to try this out. I might like to try this out and see if this weapon type is worthwhile, and if it is, maybe you'll stick around and the next time he's selling that package, you'll pick it up and buy it and see what he brings, hopefully something great for you. As far as my loot that I ended up grabbing from Banshee, on my hunter turning in package number one, we end up getting ourselves a Suros DIS-47. So as far as I recall, the DIS-47 is the quicker rate of fire scout rifle. Let's see if I got anything decent on it. So I got hip fire, and that's not exactly what I'd be looking for to begin with. I do have perfect balance, which is pretty nice. No to casket mag. And I also have small bore. So it looks like I could get some decent stability on this thing, but I think I'm actually going to turn this one into shards or infuse it into a primary that is not 330 just yet. The stability roll on this isn't that bad as far as comparable to the Trials of Osiris scout rifle of the same damage profile but I don't really think I'm going to keep this one around. I don't really have anything to infuse it with right here on my Hunter, so let's just move on to character number two. For the Titan, we end up turning in our package, and Banshee, what kind of loot are you going to give us for the Titan? We end up nabbing ourselves a Tamar D. 
So I do not actually own this sniper rifle, so we'll take a look at it. Also, that roll on the Arminius is pretty good, but I already have one with counterbalance and crowd control, which is pretty amazing, so that's why I didn't pick that one up. As far as this Tamar D goes, this sniper rifle has surplus. With those ammo nerfs, this isn't too bad for PvE. The problem is, it has Gorilla Fighter, and because Gorilla Fighter is just so blah for a perk, that pretty much ruins this rifle for me. I'm just not going to keep it around because of Gorilla Fighter. Otherwise, I might have kept it around for PvE. Chances are I wouldn't have used it. I've got some much better sniper rifles, but this one at least started off promising. And finally, on my Warlock, turning in our last Banshee package, are you going to give us something absolutely amazing? And you end up giving us a Tuanella SR4. So let's take a look at it. It's basically a scout rifle that's Omelon, and Omelon scout rifles look amazing. Everything Omelon actually looks amazing. And the perks don't look all that bad. In fact, this is pretty freaking amazing. Hand laid stock is pretty much going to boost up my stability all the way to max. I'd probably rather have that than braced frame because the magazine size is relatively low. Grenadier isn't a perk that people do backflips for, but it's really not bad, and life support is not terrible either. So overall, I think the main thing that I'd want on this Tuanella is maxing out that stability, basically being able to fire on a pinhead, and this thing is not bad at all. We are definitely locking this in. As far as scout rifles go, this thing has got stability for days. I'm going to be able to fire at the head. If I happen to get low on life, I might get life support to proc, and I can regenerate my grenades on kills. So yeah, overall, this Tuanella became pretty hot. It came in pretty hot. I'd say congrats, Banshee. You did a pretty good job. Anyway, guys and gals, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, smack that like button and subscribe to the channel. Check out these awesome videos. Good luck with your raids, your drops, your Banshee, and I'll see you around. In Destiny, Banshee coming in hot with that Tuanella.